beautiful people and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the volume of pyramids. Now here I have pre-drawn one type of pyramid. I will say this is the most common pyramid. Um, so one thing that you have to know about pyramids, and that way you don't get confused with a triangular prism, is that there is a vertex. So this point right here is called the vertex. And that is where all of our sides meet up. So this one right here, this one right here, this one, and then this one here. So that's really what you're looking for when you're identifying if in fact you have a pyramid. Now notice we do have a base. So we have this right here and this base here. Let's call this a square. It kind of looks like a square. So this here is a square. So what do we have? What do we call it? We call it a square pyramid. So a pyramid, let's write that here, is a 3D figure with a polygon base and triangular sides that meet at the vertex. All right. The height of the pyramid, so notice we have our kind of like our sides of the base, we have our sides of the triangle. The height of the pyramid is the perpendicular distance from the vertex to the, to the base. So here's our base. Let me actually do this in green here. Here's our base. And so the height is from the bottom all the way to the top of our vertex there. So this green line, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but that green height, green line is our height. Sometimes what you're going to see is you're going to see a line here, kind of on the side of your um, pyramid. So this side or this length is no, uh, let me back up a little bit. So this right here is indicated by a cursive lowercase l. It's like a twirly l, but lowercase. And that is our slant height. So when we are calculating the volume of pyramids, you'll notice in a few moments that our formula does not ask for a slant height. It's asking for the height. So it's asking for the perpendicular distance from the, from the base to the vertex. So some of the questions will give you this instead. So how do you deal with that? Well, I've actually made some pyramids here. Here's one, you can see that it's open. Here it is closed, here's our pyramid. I've also made another one. Here it is, again, I, I don't wanna close it permanently here because I wanna show you something. So let's start with a square pyramid. I think this is more like a rectangle. Is it square? It looks like a square. Let me undo it. So we have our base. We have our four triangles. We have the height, which is from the base, so from this bottom, all the way to this meeting point here, this point right here on the tip, where all of these triangles, all of these sides meet up. So that distance, all the way down is your height and then your slant height. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it. And I want to show you where your slant height is. Your slant height is right here. This is where your slant height is. Okay. So notice that your slant height is not the actual height of your pyramid. It's slanted. So it's not your height. I'm going to draw this out right next to what we have. Might not be perfect, but that's okay. So this is what we have. This is where our slant height is. 
So let's say we are given the slant height, but we are not given the actual height. So how do we figure that out? So if we have a pyramid, and again, we're going with a square base or a rectangular base pyramid. Let's draw this out really quick. And if they give us our slant height, but they don't give us our height, we need to find out what it is. So here's our perpendicular to the base height. And I'm actually going to do something for you real quick. I'm going to extend this line here. So what does it mean to be perpendicular? Perpendicular means that it meets at a right angle. So what we really have here, I'm going to extend this out, is we have a perpendicular, here's our height, we have a perpendicular line that is to, perpendicular to the base, so it meets at a right angle. And then, I don't know if you just heard that, but the AC turned on, I apologize if you can hear that. And then we have this slant height. So if we know what this measure is, let's call this x, if we know what this measure is and if we know what the slant height is, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate what our height is. All right, let's draw this picture one more time. And again, we're only using like a rectangular based prism or a square, uh, I call that a prism, a rectangular based pyramid or a square pyramid. Now you can do this with any other base. Notice that our definition, it says a polygon base. A polygon just means a many-sided shape, okay? So it doesn't matter what the shape is. It's going to be exactly the same. All right, so let's draw this out this way. Here's our rectangle. Here's our one, two, three, four triangles. And now sometimes not only will they give you a slant height, but they're going to give you an edge. We're going to call this an edge. Uh, in a previous video, uh, when we first introduced prisms, we talked about a lateral edge. Sometimes they're going to give you this. Let's call this edge, so we'll call this E. They're going to give you this side right here. It's not the slant height, and it's not the height. However, let's color code this to be red as well. So that's the, the side, so it's not the slant height. Here is the perpendicular line to the base, so here's our height. So here it is right here. And again, it is perpendicular. So even though I drew the perpendicular line this way, it can be perpendicular this way. It's all perpendicular. So what we can do is, once again, draw it out this way. So here's our height. Here's your side or connect, connection, it kind of would look like this way, right? Because we're slanted, still perpendicular to it. So we still have a right angle here. And then we have our edge here. This is, I let's do this lowercase because my OCD is kicking in. Here's our edge. So this is super duper important later on when we work on uh, surface area, but I do want to mention this now. So if you're confused, if something is the height or not, Open it up, open up your pyramid, and then note where it is. Is your slant height here? Do we have an edge on the prism, or do we have a perpendicular line from the vertex all the way down to your base? All right, let's do some examples, but before that, I did not even disclose our formula, so let's go ahead and disclose our formula. I'm going to put the formula in a thinking bubble. I think it's super duper important. So we're going to highlight that in a bubble. So volume of a pyramid. And that is one third times zero area of the base. I'm going to put a little A here so you know it's the base area times the height of the prism. And again, capital B always, always, always tells you that it is the area of the base. All right, let's go ahead and do these examples real quick. Here's our first example. I'm going to zoom that in. 
what do we have? Identify what do we have? Step number one is always the same. Name your prism, name your triangle. 24 and 24 means I have a square pyramid. Step number two, write down your formula. Your formula is volume is one third times the area of the base and the height of the prism. So let's continue. One third times the area of the base. So what is your base? Your base is a square. So area, how do we find the area of a square? We multiply the sides. And then what is the height of the prism? Again, it has to be perpendicular. So from the bottom of the base all the way to the top of the vertex, we have a height of 16. So now we just plug everything into our calculator and then find the answer. And that is, let's see. And I have here 3,072. It does give us our unit centimeters. What did we find? Volume. Volume is always cubed. All right. Here's another one for you. I'm going to pause the video here. Go ahead and try to solve this on your own. I'm going to zoom in. Try to solve this one on your own and then uh, input your answer. And then once you do that, we'll come back and do this together. All right. Step number one, always the same. What do you have? I have a 2.5 and a 1.5 for my base. That means that is not a square, it is a rectangle. Step number two, write out your formula. Volume is equal to one third times the area of your base times the height of the prism. And we're multiplying. So then volume is equal to one third times the area of the base. So what is our base? Our base is a rectangle. Units of measure is 2.5 and 1.5. So then how do we calculate the area? Well, we just multiply these two numbers. And then I'm gonna put these in parentheses. I feel like there's too many dots there. And then what's the height of the prism? Again, perpendicular to the base. Here's our base, here's our vertex, all the way down. Perpendicular, oh, you can see that. Perpendicular to the base, and it tells us that this is 1.5. So then again, trusty calculator, type all of this in, press enter one time. And so what do we have? We have 1.875 centimeters cubed. Again, make sure you have your units of measure and that they are cubed. All right, let's do one more example. In this example, we're moving on to composite fi figure. So again, if you haven't um, watched the previous videos on composite figures, Go ahead and do that now. So composite figures, we're combining multiple prisms. We're combining multiple volumes to find out one total volume. So find the volume of the composite figure formed by a pyramid removed. I'm actually going to highlight that word removed from a prism. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so anytime we're dealing with composite figures, I want you to do this. So identify, step number one is identify, name your prism. So what are you dealing with? The first thing I see is I have a 25, 12, and a 15 rectangular prism. I then know that I have a pyramid, but what kind of pyramid? What's the base? Yes, the pyramid is upside down, but you can still identify the base. The base is a rectangle. So I have a rectangular prism and I have a rectangle pyramid. Okay, so formulas. Let's not number this because I, I numbered the size. Formulas, volume for a rectangular prism is what? You should know this. If you don't, you need to start memorizing these. And that is always the area of the base times the height of the prism. What is your formula for a volume of a pyramid? And that is one third times the area of the base times the height of the prism. All right, so then let's do this. Area of the base. So what is the base? Try to like separate those two things. You have your rectangular prism, then you have your rectangular pyramid or rectangle pyramid. So what do we have first? We have our 
we have our rectangular prism. We have 25, 12, and 15. We are wanting to focus on the base. So it's up to you if you want the base to be on the sides or if you want the base to be on the bottom. So let's choose the bottom and the top for our base. So then we have our base of 25 and 12. So how do we find the area of that? We just multiply them. So 25 times 12. So then what is the height of our prism? The height of this is 15. And I'm not even going to calculate that right now because I only want to take out my calculator one time. I'm going to go over here for the rectangular pyramid. So again, I'm going to focus on my pyramid. And again, volume is equal to one third area of the base. So here's our base. And that looks like this. What is this side here? And that is 12. What is this side here? And that is 25. So now I have 12 and 25. And then what is the height of your uh, pyramid? So again, it has to be perpendicular. So here is the base. And we're talking about all the way straight down. Here's our base. We're talking all the way straight down. This unit of measure matches up with this unit of measure. Do you see that? All the way straight down. They are parallel lines. They are perpendicular to the base. So we have a height of 15. So now we take our calculator, we plug some numbers in, and then we solve. So then what do we have? Let's see here. What do we have? Sorry, guys. Calculator was a little bit further away from me than I imagined. So I have 25 times 12 times, just kidding, times 15. So I have, that's not right. 4,500, what are my units of measure? I didn't give any units of measure. They still are units and they still are cubed. All right, let's do this one more time. I have 25 times 12 times 15, we already know that value, but then I'm gonna divide that by three or multiply it by one third, which are exactly the same thing. So I have volume is equal to 1500 units cubed. Now we have to ask ourselves, did we add or did we remove? What did we do? Did we add or remove? We actually removed and that's where this, the word removed, I highlighted it. So we removed. So how do you take away? How do you remove? Well, in math, take away or remove is subtraction. So we have a volume of 4,500, and we removed 1,500 of that volume. So what are we left with? We are left with a volume of 3,000. And again, we do have units. They are units, and they still are cubed. So what is our total volume? Our total volume is 3,000 units cubed. All right, let's do, I think we have time for one more. Let's see what we have. Here's another example. Again, we're working on composite figures. We have a rectangular prism with two congruent square pyramids on top. Again, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the total volume. So now instead of having two, we now have three things that we're working on. We're working with a rectangular prism. And how do I know? They actually told me I am working with two congruent. So a congruent is a math term. You should know what congruent means at this point. But congruent means equal in measure. Okay, so all the, this one and this one are equal in measure. They are the same there. If I put one on top of the other, they should match up. They're equal in measure. So I'm going to say pyramid one and pyramid two. You don't have to split up the two pyramids in this specific example because they are congruent. Um, but I do want to get you into the habit of separating each image or each figure. All right. We are trying to find volume. And then what is the volume of a rectangular prism? It's the area of the base times the height of the prism. What is the vol volume for a pyramid? It is one third times the area of the base times the height of the prism. And for a pyramid, one third times the area of the base times the height of the prism. 
All right, let's work with our rectangular prism. Again, separate it out one at a time. I have a 10, I have a 5, and a 2. I understand that it has units of measure. I'm going to keep them here. What is our area of the base? What is our base? Our base is a rectangle. Again, if it was something different than a rectangular prism, we would take whatever it is, like for example, a triangular prism, a uh, trapezoidal prism. But in this case, we do have a rectangle as our base. Rectangle as our base. So how do we find the area of a rectangle? And that is we multiply these two numbers. What is the height of the rectangular prism? And that is two. Okay, again, I'm not going to calculate this until later on because I only want to touch my calculator one time. Volume of the pyramid. I'm going to draw out these pyramids like this. There it is. And again, I'm drawing it kind of in the middle because they are congruent, they are equal in measure. So what is this side here? And what is this side here? And what is this side here? So it's a little, I don't know if it's challenging, but it is, it is a little bit difficult to see. Notice that we have one of the sides being we have five feet. So this side here is five feet. If you read the question or the prompt again, you have a rectangular prism with two congruent, and they tell you something super important, square pyramid. They named the pyramid for you. So we know that this bottom, this base is a square. And what do we know about squares? All of the sides are the same. So now when we calculate the area of the base, we know that we have a square. And how do we calculate the area of a square? Well, we just multiply. So let's do it. I'm going to do it only one time, but I'm going to do it twice. You'll see what I mean by that. So we have 1 third times the area of the base, which is 5 by 5. And then what's the height of the prism? Excuse me, what's the height of the pyramid? So in this example, they do give us the height, which is perpendicular of from the base to the vertex or from the vertex to the base and that is three feet and i'm actually going to write this out twice because i have two pyramids that are congruent so i have my prism i have my one pyramid and i have my second pyramid okay so asking the same question again do i add or do i subtract are we adding things or are we taking away are we removing so in this example we are adding because we have a pyramid and then we have a uh, excuse me of a prism and then we have a pyramid and then we have another pyramid so we're going to add all these volumes volumes together and then see what that gives us adding everything including this one right here and we get a total volume of 150 feet all right you guys that wraps it up for us thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or if you notice any mistakes please let me know as always like share subscribe for these videos thank you again have a great day and i'll see you in my next video bye beautiful people